Hello there, so this is the second of my individual car review videos and we looked at the Stirling GT last time. This time I'm going to take this one over here, the Coquette Classic, so another sports classic car. First of all, uh, price wise, if you go to Legendary Motorsport it will cost you $665,000. Now a while ago the separate hardtop and topless versions uh, were different prices, the topless one would have cost you $690,000. $5,000. However, in an update recently, without really making a big deal about it, they have made them the same price and there's a reason for that which you will see later if you don't already know about it. So this car, fairly expensive, not quite as expensive as some of the others like the Sterling GT and the Z-Type which are sort of beyond $900,000, but uh, quite a nice car. Um, it's based on the Chevrolet Corvette C2. Uh, which is sometimes referred to as a Stingray Corvette um, it's a nice car, I like it in reality, it's one of my favourite cars in reality um, I think price wise it's not absolutely excessive but it is quite a lot so if you're bothered about, enough about this sort of thing then, then do it but I think maybe the verdicts I give on different aspects throughout the rest of this video might help you uh, make your decision on that so first of all the way I've done my one here, I've decided to go for something which is based on uh, the Gulf Racing Team colours. Uh, Gulf Racing, it's a, it's a racing team and their livery in reality is like a very sort of pale blue with an orange uh, colour as well. Sort of, they usually have it on the sides, uh, the hoods, the spoilers, the fins. Um, you know those sorts of areas and sometimes the mirrors as well and I just think it's a really nice colour combination and certainly older cars like in, in reality like the Ford GT uh, or the GT40 rather uh, they had these colours because they they were part of the Gulf racing sort of fleet if you like now I've tried to make this look as like a sort of classic racing sort of car and I think it sort of works anyway enough of that I'll get into what this car's like so first of all Races. Um, there's quite a lot to be said about this car, really. Um, as you can probably hear, quite a powerful car. Sounds more like a muscle car than anything else, and really, I suppose it is a muscle car, but because it's also a classic car, they've decided to make it a sports classic. So, fair play, you know, that's up to them. Um, it could have gone in either, really. But the thing about this car, right, it's, it's very good in terms of its acceleration, it's very powerful and the top speed's also impressive. The handling, I wouldn't say the handling's bad, however, it does take a lot of getting used to and it's not an easy car to drive. What you end up with quite often, especially if you've just sort of started braking, is there'll be a little bit of understeer initially and then there'll be quite a lot of oversteer. You'll notice even on the slight brake it's twitching, it's drifting around quite a lot. At speed, at sort of high speeds, it becomes quite stable. The back end sort of keeps it gripped down. However, when you slow down, that changes. I mean, I'll just show you this. If I go around this corner a lot, it's just struggling, especially here. I mean, look at that. Slow down even more and it just steps out. So it's a difficult car. You've got to be really familiar with the, the handling of this one. If you know what to expect and you know that it's going to kick out and give you oversteer, you have to be ready to flick the analog stick the other way and correct it. This is what I'm having to do constantly. If I turn around here, I, I know it's going to drift out, so I've got to sort of correct it and it's just, I can't do it, you know, because it, it's such a, <laughs> it's a difficult car. Um, it is a good car, it's not the worst car you could pick in races, but there's certainly easier cars to drive and I'm just constantly having to correct this drifting to make sure it doesn't spin all the way around. It can be useful though, for tight corners it might actually get you around faster, but it's... It's not an easy car to drive, but it, it will be rewarding if you can sort of make use of it. So, in races, pretty good, but not easy. In free mode, it's not... I don't think it's a particularly strong car. I've sometimes crashed this and it has affected the steering a bit and it's made it even more vulnerable to drifting. Um, it's, it's fast, it's good for getting around, but with it being quite a difficult car, if you, if you have a crash, I suppose that leaves you vulnerable as well to players' attacks. Um, 
and obviously you've only got two seats. So it, I wouldn't say it's the best car for free mode. It is definitely a car for showing off and for for having for the sake of having. It's one of those. <coughs> um, so my overall verdict in terms of a rating on those areas, races. Mm, I, I'm going to give it a seven actually. It is a good car for anyone who's used to this sort of driving, but it's a difficult car to drive and it's one where you can never really be comfortable and, and know that you're, going, you're definitely going to be up there somewhere. You've got to choose it and think, right, okay, if I drive it well enough, I'm going to be up there. However, if something goes horribly wrong that I can't actually prevent, then I'm screwed. That's the sort of situation I'm in when I'm using this for a race, which I don't very often, but sometimes I, I choose to for the tighter tracks to sort of get it round corners with a bit of a drift. Um, free mode, probably the same sort of thing. Again, probably another seven. It's a nice car for bringing to car meetups. It's a nice car for showing off to your friends. It's not the most useful car for getting around because of <coughs> how difficult it is and how much of a struggle it is. Uh, and its damage retention isn't fantastic. It's, it's fairly tough initially, but then when it does become damaged, the handling can be compromised sometimes. So that's something to bear in mind. What I'm now going to do is go to the mod shop and show you what customization options are available for this car. There's quite a bit you can do. I wouldn't say there's loads, but I've done what I can to make this look as racy as possible, especially with the, the sort of the wheels and the, and the custom sort of writing on the walls, which I, I think for these particular wheels, is, you can see it quite well. Um, so yeah, I'll just show you what you can do to this. I mean that's quite nice. Like, for things like that, you know, if you, if you really want to give it a drift round, like when I when I approached the garage door for the the Los Santos Customs, then it was a really nice drift that I managed to do to get round. You know, not many cars are capable of doing that, but it's only good if you want it to. You know, right? So bumpers. There's quite a lot of options for this actually. Um, the the options aren't massively different, but there's just very small discrete differences between them. So this is how it comes as stock. So just a you've got quite a thin, simple sort of bumper with a chrome bar on the front. So you can put this splitter on. Um, you can also have a bumper similar to the stock one but with uh, a colour instead of the chrome section. And that can be a primary or a secondary colour. So there are two, that's what I'm talking about, discreetly uh, different sort of options but nothing, although it appears to be a lot of choice, they are just sort of slight differences. Or you can just get rid of that front bumper, like a little sort of bar going across, you can get rid of it completely if you wanted to. Uh, or you can have the that bumper with the splitter, so have both of them, and that can be primary or secondary colour. Or you can get rid of the bumper and have the splitter. So basically what you're dealing with here is a bumper and a splitter and different combinations of each with different colours. So there's loads of options, but because of the combinations you can have. Um, the rear bumpers, you can have, well, this is what you get as stock, just a chrome sort of, two chrome bars on each side. You can change that to secondary or primary color, or you can get rid of it. And I've chosen to get rid of it on this because I think it, I don't know, it makes it look more race prepared somehow. I don't know why I think that. I think it's a lot of racing cars of that time used to have quite a flat, sort of looking rear section at the back so that's that exhausts um yeah with this you can these are your stock exhausts are just simple single sort of exhaust uh you can change to sort of slightly bigger chrome tip exhausts there are race exhausts which are quite long and sort of angular which i quite like those actually uh, there's these titanium twin exhausts which is what i've decided to go for I, mean, I quite like the race exhaust actually, I'm, I may change to that because I do like those. Um, I'm not entirely sure about that. Yeah, I'm going to have those for a while. Or, something which I don't think suits how I've done the car, you can have side exit exhaust, but I've decided not to because for making it look like a race car, it's, they wouldn't have that sort of thing and I've got those on my one of my other cars anyway, so I decided to be different. Right, uh, hood options. Um, not really anything major. All you can do is change to a secondary colour, uh, which I have done. Or you can have a carbon hood. 
So that's they're the options for that. I've decided to go for secondary colour. Um, what else is the yeah roll cage option again? So you can see that there. Nothing much to say about that really. It, it, supposed to improve your rigidity but I don't think it does right this is something I wanted to comment on and this option never used to exist however it links to what I was saying about the pricing of the two different versions of this car earlier so the topless version used to be six hundred and ninety five thousand dollars however now they're both six hundred and sixty five thousand and that's because they've added this option of it doesn't matter which version you buy you can change to the other version you can sort of convert it so if you bought the version with the hard top you can change to the soft top version no, I keep saying that not soft top sorry topless version um, and if you bought the topless version you can change to the one with the roof for this car um, I I mean the, it looks okay without a top but I love the shape of that roof the way it curves down at the back it's just it's not the same without it so personally I decided to leave the roof on but it's a nice option that they've added the reason they've obviously changed the price of the topless version is otherwise you could literally buy the hard top version and convert it and it cost you you know quite a lot less so something they've changed quite sneakily there in an update but it's worth knowing and it's something I'll also mention it's not just for this car there are other cars where you can get uh, hardened topless versions and this sort of same option exists where you can have the roof or not so that's quite a good feature so that's as far as it goes in the way of customization and I think that's pretty much it for this car so uh, my overall verdict on it it's I do like this car if you're a fan of this sort of car then you, you can't really go wrong with it it's a really good car I love the sound I love the way it drifts if I want to do stuff like this and just mess around for a while I can quite easily um, yeah and if I was to say whether it's worth buying I'd say from my perspective yes and it's not as steeply priced as some of the other sports classics however if you're going to find the handling a struggle and if you're not really too keen on this sort of car anyway I would say probably not because in races it's not going to give you a clear advantage it'll only be useful to you if you if you like cars that handle that way now it's not my favorite in a race I do use it sometimes but I would not have bought this purely for racing let's just say that I bought it because I like this car and the car that is based on in reality is one of my favorite cars so I had to have it and just quickly the interior again uh, a bit like still in GT fairly basic looking you can see your roll cage in the back as well um, and it's also like the still in GT it's also got the yellow line on the wheel for to mark the sort of central point for when the the wheel is sort of in the middle when you're racing so I think that's pretty much all there is to say about this car I really like it personally but I just thought I'd give you that sort of information and perhaps scrutinize it a bit for its weird sort of handling characteristics uh, just in case you weren't too keen on how it drove because it's not an easy car to drive it's uh, a lot harder than it looks I'll, I'll just say that so I think that's it for this one um, and for the next one I plan to move to a muscle car just to change things up a bit so I'll, I'll see you next time